Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be repotting the Strasra Regia, so stick around. If you're new to this channel, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of plants and more specifically carnivorous plants, just like the Sanji over here. With over nine years of experience, I'm sure that this channel will be able to help you with your plants. So let's jump right into today's video. So this is our Drosera Regia. If you don't really know anything about sundews, this is known as the King Sundew because it is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, sundew out of all of them. And right here you can see our, uh, I would say, medium-aged Drosera Regia. We have about one, two, three, four, about four or five growth points over here. The main mother plant actually died off in summer um, while I was away overseas. And from that, we got five plants. And it's actually quite a sad reason as to why we are repotting this Drosera regia. And these Dros I mean, these uh, Pinguicula moctezumae here. And the sad reason is that um, you probably know by now if you've been following the channel that I'm leaving uh, South Africa, I'm leaving the country and I need to sell off the plants. So this Drosera Regia needs to be divided up uh, and so do these Pinguicula here as they're both um, being bought by someone. It's quite, quite sad as I've had these, this specific plant for about three years. And I grew these from seed and as you can see starting to flower so from seed to flower this this little colony has um, grown from so let me just set you guys up so you can see better and I'll get back to you now so here we got our big Drosera Regia you can see it nicely in the camera and it's currently growing in sphagnum moss and I need to repot it into peat as I don't have enough sphagnum moss as getting sphagnum moss in this country is very difficult. So let me just get all of the ingredients out before I continue talking about the history of this plant and why it's so special to me. Here we got silica sand, we've got some big boy peat and we've got our mixing pot and we've got five pots for the five plants. And here's a container just to put the old media into. We actually gonna try reuse as much media as we can as sphagnum moss is really good for growing the Drosera regia. And a pair of scissors just to cut off anything that we may need to cut off. I think that the plants are all still together at the rhizome and I think we're gonna have to separate them using scissors. So let's see. So you may be wondering why I have tin foil around the plant and that's purely because Drosera regia I prefer to be uh, kept growing cold um, and the tin foil just helps to keep all the sunlight off of the plant that may be hitting the pot and just to keep the roots cool. Uh, I'm not really sure if it does actually do anything but it works for me. I've got a pretty good little colony here. We just want to turn the pot upside down. No. Okay. So we can't do the traditional method of just pulling it out uh, or turning it upside down. So let's just cut off some of the old dead leaves. As you can see here, there's some grass, I guess, growing in here uh, that came from the sphagnum. And this grass is purely a result of the sphagnum being contaminated with seeds because the sphagnum is really low quality. No matter how difficult it is to find, it's still going to be low, low quality. I 
I've just cleaned out all the old leaves just to make it a little bit easier to try wiggle out the plant from the sides. Um, I've never really unpotted from sphagnum before because as I've said so many times now, it's not easy to, to actually acquire. So huh, um, I'm just gonna try once, once more just to turn it upside down and try pull the sphagnum out from the sides and see if that helps at all. Okay, so the old technique of squeezing the pots by the side has really helped. So looks like it will come out now. So as you can see, we have some very healthy roots here. It's just here, see this black furry one here, some white ones at the bottom here, red tip there. You see them coming right down the sides of the plant. Very healthy plant. And really the the roots are so healthy that the sphagnum is still in the shape of the pot. So take from this what you want. I really do think that sphagnum is the best media for, for growing Drosera regia. Let me just tell you guys a little bit about why I love this Drosera regia so much. So when I first started getting into growing carnivorous plants in South Africa, there was only one person in the whole country that had some very few carnivorous plants available. And I, I know the guy, he's a, he's a nice guy, lives in Cape Town. And I saw online that there was uh, the biggest Drosera, sorry for the airplane guys. I saw online that the biggest Drosera in the world was this Drosera regia and I wanted one so badly because it's so um, big and it makes such uh, big leaves and if you've ever seen a Drosera regia capture its prey it really curls around the plants and eats them like like you are not escaping right now kind of way and I thought that was really fascinating I still think it is obviously and so I went on to this guy's site to see if they, if he had any available and um, at that time he didn't. Um, because, you know, even though they are from South Africa, no one in South Africa had them. There were obviously people around the world that had these plants available to them. And so I'm just trying to open, get a pot out. There were other people around the world that had the plants available, but no one in South Africa did. And funnily enough, he actually had Drosera Adelaide available. Um, and if you know Drosera Adelaide, it's not, it's not the easiest of plants to find. And it's very similar looking to the Drosera Regia, but it comes from Australia. And I was like, okay, well, I'll, I guess I'll get the Drosera Adelaide. So I got it. And I grew it for some time. I actually couldn't take it with me as I just moved um, at that time. Just quickly, I'm just letting you guys know that I'm taking some of the moss and patting, packing it down so that there's good contact with the water and the moss at the bottom here. So I had moved at that time and I couldn't take the plant with me. So it stayed with my grandparents and it grew with them and it, you know, it grew, it didn't grow nicely. It wasn't the most good looking um, Drosera Adelaide ever, but you know, I liked it still and still really wanted to get a Drosera Regia. Every now and then I check back up on his site and he didn't really update it much. Just another one. Look how sticky the Drosera Regia is. This is why Drosera Regia is like so well known to being super sticky. So I might need to get a bigger pot. I did not think that it would turn out like this. So let me just get a bigger container. Okay, just got a nice big bowl here. So let's continue breaking it up in the bowl. Yeah, I really wanted to get a Drosera Regia and I'll check up on the store every now and then to see, you know, luck, luck, luckily if I check at the right time, he might have one available, but no, that was never the case. So for about, I would say four years or so, I had really wanted this Drosera Regia, but I uh, had no actual way to get a Drosera Regia. So I just continued, you know, collecting some other Drosera here and there. Uh, eventually, after about five years of really wanting this plant, 
I was down in Cape Town where the seller of this plant was. And I asked him, you know, can I come past and just look at your nursery, see what, like, see all your plants? And he was like, yeah, sure. Went past and I saw he had Drosera regi. He had this specific plant, um, well, not the specific one. These are the babies of the plants which I bought from him. I was like, I really want one of those Drosera. Like, can I get one? And he was like, yeah, sure, of course. Like, he will, because he didn't really have them in separate pots. He had them in one big pot and he had to still divide it up. He's like, sure, I'll divide it up for you. I'll get you a nice big one and I'll put it in a nice big pot. Um, and I was like, great, thank you. I'll come past again and I'll get it. So uh, I think a couple more days later, I went back there, saw the plants, he had potted it all up for me and I bought it. And I finally had the first, my first Drosera regia. Yo, I loved, like I really enjoy growing this plant. So I took it back up with me to Johannesburg, which is the part of South Africa, which I stay in. I took it up with me and I just kept it in the same media that he had potted the plants up in. And I was just growing it, you know, outside as one thinks that you should without really doing much research on it. And I mean, it was, it's a pretty strong, this specific one is a pretty strong growing plant. It grew fine. Uh, it didn't grow fast, it didn't have very big leaves, it didn't, um, have the most sticky leaves either wasn't catching a lot of bugs you know but i didn't really think much of it because i was quite busy with university uh, still am actually so busy with university but i'm um, back then i didn't have any other place to put the plants like i do now you know, i have a big greenhouse uh, now which i can keep this inside of and back then i didn't i actually had it downstairs where i'm currently standing and so it continued growing. It wasn't doing very well. It was just kind of growing, doing its thing, you know? So then I had to leave the country to go work in England. So my brother was left up to the task of looking after all of my plants, like every single plant that I own, my brother had to look after them. And he, looked after them just fine he did everything that he needed to but obviously if you're not there to look after your plant you don't really know this you can't really expect someone who has no idea about the plants and the signs and symptoms to be able to fix it or do anything about it so the drosera regi flowered while i was away after it had flowered the main plant died away and if you can imagine I was like really, really upset about this as, this is one of my favorite carnivorous plants. You know, I've wanted this plant for ages and now it's died. And I was so super upset and I had no clue like how to get it back. I was just came back from England now, about to start um, currently my third year of university. And I was super upset about it because this is literally one of the most special plants in my opinion and one of my favorite plants. And now it's dead, you know? So, I just left, kind of left it in the pot, um, in the same place that it was growing the, the whole time that I had owned the plant. And it uh, miraculously actually came back. So if you know anything about Drosseregia, you'll know that they are known for growing back from roots. You can take root cuttings of the plants and they uh, grow back um, from roots and they grow quite a few plantlets from the roots. And obviously that happened here with us. So they grew, grew back from the roots we had a nice little clump of plants that we have, like as you can see right here. And I was like, okay, well, I'm back here. I've built my Highland greenhouse with all the new plants that I brought in from Europe. I was like, okay, well, let's figure out like why it hasn't been growing to the best of its capability. Why doesn't my carnivorous um, uh, sanju, my regi look like all the other ones that I've seen online, you know? So I decided to uh, read up on it and if you've ever read the savage garden by peter diamato i think that he suggests in there growing the plants in in a uh, sphagnum moss and i was like okay well if it works for him i'm pretty sure it will work for me too i had to really travel around quite a bit had to go look at different orchid stores who were um growing the orchids in um hopefully sphagnum and some of them were growing them in bark and uh, they had 
um, not the same kind of sphagnum moss they had, uh, some other kinds of mosses that they were growing it in. And eventually I found a store in South Africa that I could drive to that was selling the sphagnum. And although they were basically selling it in, it was used sphagnum that they got from their imports from China. So essentially China was packing the little orchids into little balls of sphagnum. And obviously if you are giving too much of water to your orchids, they rot away. So they had to take all that sphagnum out of the plants and then repot it into the meter that they used. So one of those telemarketers called me while I was recording and canceled the video. So as you can see, I've already, I've already repotted all the plants now, all five little Drosera regia here. And got a root from it, a little root cutting. So essentially what I did is that I just compacted some of the long fibrous sphagnum moss at the bottom here, just so that it has good contact with the water. I then filled the pot back up with long fibrous sphagnum and did it for all of them. And I'm just gonna show how you do a root propagation for a Drosera regia. If you enjoyed today's story about the regia, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and remember to subscribe as every week I'll be posting a new video on the coniferous plants that I have. So thank you guys. See you next time. Bye.